morning, guys. It's 535. It's 38.5 degrees. It's day. 63, it's June 4th, it's town day, we're going to get to Salida, but I'm waking up at 11,533 feet above the planet Earth's oceans. All right, good morning folks, 6.51 in the morning, 36.6 degrees. I'm not sure whether these are old trees or old like power lines or or what. I'm not really sure what those structures are, those big posts. <clears throat> Anyways, yeah, it was a really, really nice night actually. Um, saddles can generally be um, potentially pretty poor places to camp. Um, they can be flat like this, and so topographically kind of a, kind of accommodating, but um, climatologically challenging. Um, but that wind, that gentle wind that was blowing, as I recorded last night's check-in, eventually subsided. <clears throat> it was a pretty calm night. Um, and as you heard, like it was like 38 when I woke up, so it never really got very cold, which was nice as well. Excuse me. And then, uh, and then also the frost and dew never set in last night, so that was nice. That was two nights running. We had pretty significant moisture when we woke up, but this morning there was none, so that was nice. Um, sorry, I'm climbing up this. I don't know why I always decide to record just as I climb up a hill. Um, this is. High water hill. We're gonna be wrapping around kind of the north or east side of this hill before we keep going. Um, and keeping going, looks like 15.8 miles to get to Monarch Pass, which is the bail point, excuse me, the bail point for Salida. Um, Midnight has lined up her partner, Tiffany slash cowgirl, to come scoop us up at 2 p.m. But uh, there exists also the distinct possibility that we may, uh, we may get there earlier than that, potentially significantly earlier from that. We may decide to just hitch into town if that's the case, we'll just send her a message, call her off. She can meet us in Salida or something. Um, well, just on cue, the next thing I wanted to mention was that a couple days ago, ran into a big green heater. My friends from the AT hiking southbound on the CDT. I guess they had jumped off to go to uh, that concert that Big Green had mentioned in our hiker chat up in uh, Red Rocks. And on account of like bus schedules and maps, it just made more sense for them to get to Salida and then hike south to Creed and then take a bus back to Salida and keep going north. So, um, so anyways, I ran into them going southbound and we kind of, as you do, exchanged uh, observations of what the trail was like ahead. And they said that the final seven miles into Monarch Pass is a whole lot of snow. So, <clears throat> so uh, it's actually really firm and kind of slick right now. I like the firm part, the slick part, I don't really care for. Um, anyway, so that's kind of the wild card of the morning day is to see how much of this how much this snow affects us and how much of this snow still exists so anyways I think that's about all I got for you this morning um, 15.8 to Monarch less than that now and uh, a lot of potential for snow on the way which which looks like their reports were accurate so yeah 
we'll get hiking. Pretty morning. I'll check in with you guys a little later. Folks, 1004, 51 degrees even, and I just crossed exactly eight miles into the day. We are here walking the uh, the old snow atop the skirt of Chipeta Mountain, and we're about to begin uh, a descent um, before one more climb. <clears throat> and following that next climb, it'll be a bit of a ramble to get into uh, to get into uh, whatever Salida. But today, as you no doubt know, I have been waiting for, with ancient breath, uh, bated breath, is, uh, is day uh, 63, multiple of seven. Time for another weekly health update. Let me just stop and give you the full 360 real quick because it's pretty nice. Yeah, not bad. And as I said, at 51 degrees, it is beautiful outside right now just a gentle wind blowing um, but not a health uh, not a weather update there's a health update so um, yeah feeling pretty good feeling pretty good feeling pretty good um, let's see follow up probably on the longest lingering story of these health updates um, my right pinky nail right pinky toe nail has, uh, has given up, it's gone. Finally gave up in Lake City after sustaining damage, probably in my first four days on the Continental Divide Trail down in the boot heel. Um, finally gave up and uh, just dropped off in Lake City. Um, decided it liked that town, wanted to start a new life there. So, so uh, we made that dream a reality for that toenail, but... Um, Let's see, aside from that, uh, I think last week I was talking about the cuts or splits or cracks or whatever the heck they are that are that have been appearing, again, since the beginning of the trail on pretty much all of my fingertips, but most, most particularly those most used fingertips, meaning my thumb and first finger, or pointer finger, whatever you want to call it. Um, well, I endeavored on this jump to keep them all extremely well dressed and covered. So we can see I have band-aids plus Luco tape to hold on the band-aids. Um, and then every night I would change those, change those kind of dressings with um, a new application of uh, Vaseline lip therapy stuff because it's, because it's what I have really. There it is. Looks every bit like I've hiked just about a thousand miles with it. Um, and that seems, the fingers seem to have responded to that pretty nicely, which is nice 
because I know that I can fix it, but it's also kind of, I shouldn't say disappointing, but now it means, <laughs> now it means I have to fix it. So, I mean, you know, I have four affected fingers. That's four band-aids per day, plus Luco tape. Um, so, you know, a four day jump or something like this, that's 16 band-aids plus a decent amount of Luco tape. So I'm not totally convinced that this keeping them wrapped solution is going to be um, the solution moving forward. Um, I think a solution I'm gonna try and kick the tires on if I can is just find a very cheap pair of those classic sort of nylon gloves, classic sort of like cheap kids gloves that you'd get. Um, and maybe just sleep in those, sleep in those gloves with, uh, with some kind of lotion or Vaseline or something on my fingers. Um, and actually to that point, when I get to Salida, I should have a box waiting there for my sister who mailed out uh, some bag balm, uh, which I've, which I've uh, secured on the recommendation of one of you guys, one of you loyal viewers. So thank you so much for that comment. Hopefully that bag balm will work great for me. I'm definitely excited to give it a try. Um, let's see, what else health-wise? I mean, sleeping good, feet feel good. Um, there was a little bit of road walking on this jump. Again, there's short videos these past few days. Um, and road walking, as you may or may not know, depending how much of attention you pay to these, um, tends to give me, tends to give me just uh, some, some kind of like blisters on my pinky toes. Um, but it wasn't, oh, look at that, a marmot way out there. Is that a marmot or a weasel? I don't know what. Goodness, looks smaller than a marmot. Um, anyways, uh, so so I had I had some of that aggravating, but luckily there was enough trail mixed in to uh, to kind of keep it pretty manageable, so that's not too bad. Um, aside from that, sleeping good, eating good, feeling good, moving good, um, legs, ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, head, all that, all good. Um, I will say I think I'm acclimating more to elevation. I mean, right now, well, when I started recording, I was at uh, 11, 11,800 feet of elevation. So I think with more, with more exposure, um, it is getting just a little easier, or maybe it's just the condition of the trail that's getting easier, who knows? Um, so that's, that's really nice. Um, I mean, we do still have a few thousand feet before we start hitting some of our max elevations for this trail. Um, I think that's around like 14,000 or something like that. But, I mean, the only way you're going to feel good at 14,000 is if you feel good at 12,000 or 11,000 or whatever. So, so, so far, so good. Let's see. Um, I think that's about it for body stuff. Um, gear stuff. Still loving the, the, uh, Phantom Zero sleeping bag. Loving, loving, loving that. And another piece of gear on a less positive note that I'll kind of shout out at this point is uh, is the Seanock bag that I've been patching and using and patching and using and patching and using for a few weeks now. My sister, uh, along with that bag bomb, is going to be sending out a replacement Seanock bag that I bought. So hopefully, hopefully uh, some of that some of that struggle will be resolved, and I'm pretty excited about it. So yeah, uh, moving forward on trail. Looks like there's a bunch of snow up ahead in the coming week or two. Not really sure what we're gonna do about that. Um, pictures from some of the guys ahead make it look very comparable to that extremely difficult section in the lower San Juans, that section between uh, Cumbres, Cumbres Pass and Wolf Creek Pass, or Chama and Pagosa Springs, if you prefer. Um, so I had been hoping to mail home my micro spikes and kind of shuffle into more reasonable uh, smooth trail type mentality but uh, it doesn't look it doesn't look like that's in the cards so far so midnight and I are hoping that snow mails, melts up but I think some of my heavy gear is gonna gonna continue coming with me for the next little while unfortunately but hopefully it'll be beautiful pretty proud of those uh, lower San Juan's videos so hopefully <laughs> if it's if it's extremely difficult and hard for me, hopefully it'll at least be pretty for you. So anyways, we'll get down to a town. Should be seven miles away. A little less than that at this point. 
uh, get down there, meet up with some of Midnight's friends who live there. Uh, her buddy Steve is going to be putting us up. Thanks so much, Steve. And seeing Tiffany and Cowgirl again, and Tiffany slash Cowgirl again. Um, should be great. Should be great. Really excited about it. I will talk to you guys later. Hope you enjoyed the health update. Just found a random sort of AT style shelter. Looks like a looks like a bus stop with a pile of snow in front of it. Super excited! We're in the gondola here. We're in the gondola! <laughs> a little uh, impromptu birthday present for Miss Midnight. Yep. Really, she's just kind of humoring me because I, I like rounded this corner down there, saw the gondola, and almost jumped out of my socks. I was so excited. I just, I'm a sucker for a gondola. Check it out. Oh, it's so much better than walking. Oh, man. 12 bucks, 12 bucks a person, and then you get some free popcorn down at the bottom. Yeah, free popcorn. It's gonna be great. Not sure the no, temperature. That's gonna get me excited. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, what, what time did we get here? I got here like right at about one, I think. Midnight got here probably just a couple minutes after me. Yeah, because it's one sixteen now. I think you're supposed to try and rock these things though, right? <laughs> no, that's not <laughs> All right, I'm gonna cut off. But anyways, we made it to Monarch Pass. We're waiting for I don't know what, Tiffany, cowgirl or cowgirl. Tiffany, whoever you got. That's true, we're on trail. We call it a cowgirl. Cowgirl, right, 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 right. Oh, man. I should tell her, like, right. we're in the gondola, look for us. Yeah, yeah, we'll be Coming waving. Up. How cool. Oh, you can see the ski area really well. That's good. Oh, yeah, all those sort of That's scars good. on the mountains. Yeah. Pop that window all the way out. Cool. All right, we'll get a view from the top. Is like we go in front of it we go we go up bald like this and then we go around and then we come down in front of clover so that's good because clover looks like there's a lot of snow on it yeah sure does and then we come down around and then up this valley behind here oh so kind of fold in behind it yeah the chalk creek pass yep which doesn't look too bad <laughs> so cowgirl made it with the van. Always great to see her. But check out, check out what she, check out what she's got. Just, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to town. <laughs> All right, let's start over there. Uh, my name's Squirt. I'm from Canada. Hey. Hey bear, not from Canada, Washington State, baby. Hey bear. <laughs> Apache, Sydney. Australia. Sydney, okay, cool. I did a year at Macquarie. Oh, really? Oh, Macquarie yeah. Uni. Yeah. Um, I'm Tibby from Sydney, Australia, too. Uh, nice town. Uh, it's 
too. <laughs> Mushka from Virginia. <laughs> Yay. And Gusha from Nashville. And we're in Virginia again? Uh, county. County, cool. All right. Full house. Full house. <laughs>